Hey, it's David Thomas with Orchard Hills Church and your morning devotion. Hope everybody's having a great week. So I wanted to jump in here today and I want to speak with you about really having your devotion. Um, you know, spending time with the Lord is by far the most important thing you can do every single day. I mean, without that guidance, without that communion, without that relationship, you know, your, your day is just out for grabs, so to speak. Um, so a lot of people, you know, especially people that are new Christians, you know, they might not, they really truly know what it means to have a devotional time. And so I want to, I want to address that today. I want to really just, you know, this is going to be more like a bullet point type thing where, you know, these are the aspects that you need to keep in mind when having a devotional, how to have a devotional and how to have a successful routine when it comes to spending time with the Lord. Okay. So, you know, first and foremost, what are you going to need? All right. So what are you going to need for your devotional? Well, obviously a Bible. All right. You're going to need a Bible. It doesn't matter whether you have the Bible app, which I absolutely personally love. Um, it actually has a lot of features, which people don't know about that. Uh, you can add notes to certain things. Um, but then again, you know, there's, you cannot replace the, uh, you know, the, the power of having the physical pages where, you know, I know some of the most precious memories are going back through my Bible and reading notes that I've written and claiming certain promises. And then looking back years later and saying, oh God, he, 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 fulf <clears throat> he fulfilled that promise, you know? So, I mean, my, my, <laughs> my father's Bible, um, you know, Dr. Stacey Thomas, who's the pastor here, he, uh, when you flip through his Bible, I mean, it's literally like, there's as much writing in it as there is scripture in it. And it's, it's unreal. So, and I know he treasures those Bibles. Um, and I know he was really disappointed and really heartbroken over his Bibles when his house burned. He lost all of his old Bibles that he had just, you know, marked up so much. So that can be a very precious thing. All right. So whether you're going to use the app, whether you're going to use a physical Bible, you're going to need a Bible. Obviously, some kind of pen or paper uh, or a pen or pencil to uh, to write with. Right. Um, if you're going to make notes in the Bible, you need that. Also, a notebook if you want to journal your thoughts. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But you might need a journal or something like that. Um, another thing you could you might need is a reading plan. Right. A lot of people like to follow a specific, you know, there's a lot of really great ones out there. I'm not going to go into different ones right now. You can do that research yourself, but, you know, ones that speak to you. But there's different devotional plans out there. You can, you know, little notebooks that you can, you that will give you scriptures and things to follow and kind of peek your, your deep thoughts into the different scriptures that are given. And those are really great uh, tools. And a lot of them will have places to write notes and that kind of thing. So, definitely recommend those as well. Um, you're going to need a quiet place. All right. You're going to need a place where there's no distractions. You can't focus. You can't think properly. You can't really truly commune with God when you have, you know, just chaos around you, you know, and especially people walking in and things like that. It's very disconcerting. Um, I know that my quiet, that's why it's called quiet time, right? My quiet time is really, really precious. So I make sure that, um, you know, I'm alone. I make sure it's quiet. I make sure that no one is going to interrupt me. All right. So um, if you're going to write anything down, uh, you know, I'm going to give you these points. The first point to, or the first, uh, I see, bullet point, I should say, to, um, you know, starting to have a successful devotional time, really starting to make that routine of spending time with the Lord is you need to make an appointment. Right. I mean, you know, if it's they say what gets scheduled gets done. OK, and it's it's one of those things where, yes, you know, we want to say that, well, just spending time with the Lord is, is natural. But we're so busy nowadays with in this world with comings and goings and, you know, kids got to go here and got to make dinner and the dog's got to get, you know, groomed and blah, 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 blah. So all this stuff that we that we go through in a regular day, plus work and everything else, um, it it's best if you schedule it. All right. They say, you know, they say that uh, if you want something done, you need to give it to the busiest person, you know, we're all busy. So you need, you know why it gets done when someone who's busy gets a, a task because they schedule it because they know they have to, otherwise it won't get done. So you need to schedule it. Um, and, you know, whether it's first thing in the morning or whether it's in the evening after the kids are asleep, no matter what, that needs to be something that you have on your calendar for the day. Okay. So that's number one. You need to make an appointment. Number two is you need to decide on a time. You need to decide on the time. Is it going to be early in the morning, right? Is it going to be late at night? I know for me personally, it's first thing in the morning, 
right? It's first thing I do my, you know, I, I get up very early. It's quiet in the house, which is rare at my, at my house with five kids. But um, first thing in the morning, I jump up and, you know, I, I make my coffee and I sit on my, uh, on my sofa. And this actually goes into the third point. Um, the third point is you need to choose a place, right? You need to have the place that you do, uh, that you go to every single time. Does that mean that you can't, you know, commune with God when you're driving in your car. You can't commune with God when you're laying in the bed. You can't commune with God when you're at work. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But if you're going to have this specific devotional time that you're going to schedule and really work on your relationship with Christ, you you need to have that same place. You know, you saw the movie War Room, right? It's that that same place. It's your it's your war room, so to speak. But anyways, jumping back to point two, which was decide on a time for me, make my coffee, sit on my, my spot, which is right there in the couch. Um, it's dark in the house. And um, that is my go-to spot. It's my go-to time before the kids get up, before the world gets crazy, uh, before my phone starts going off, emails start going off, messages start going off. You know, I don't expect anybody knocking on the door when it's wee hours in the morning, right? Now I know for my wife, it's late in the evenings, you know, because everybody's asleep. You know, I go to bed early, the kids go to bed early, early ish, <laughs> earlier than her. And that's the time when she can commune with God. So, whatever your schedule is, you need to choose that time. So, number three, choose the place. Number four is have an agenda for your devotion, right? Have your routine within that devotion. What are you going to do first? Are you going to read the Bible first? Are you going to pray first? Are you going to, you know, journal your, your thoughts? You know, you need to have your series of events that you're going to do. So, you know, for me for personally, it's I read my Bible first, right? And then secondly, I'm going to pray. So I have that, that method that I follow every time. And it really will help you to get into that routine, which is the whole point. We want you to get into a routine of really working on your relationship with Christ. Okay. So have an agenda for that devotional time. All right. So we're going into Bible reading right? Or maybe you're doing your Bible study, whichever way you, you know, whatever you're following, you need to have met, have, and don't just, you know, you can do this. You can just open up the Bible randomly and read, but after a while, that's going to get a little disconcerting. What I would recommend is having a plan. Are you reading through the Old Testament? Are you reading through the New Testament? Are you reading all of Psalms? Are you reading all of Proverbs? right? You know, just no matter what it is, you can jump around to, okay, you know, I'm going to read all through Psalms. Then when I get through, I'm going to read all through Proverbs, right? Then I'm going to read all of the New Testament, you know, whatever it is for you, have that plan, right? And that's going to help keep you where you're, you're moving, you're always making progress. And really, I mean, I, I love reading through the New Testament. Love it. Absolutely. Highly recommend it. Psalms as well will we'll always speak to speak to the heart. It always does. Um, but no matter what you're doing, whether you're following an agenda or, you know, following a, a reading plan, just think about how you're going to approach your Bible reading, okay? Then we have prayer, right? That's the next point. So, so far, let me recap. We have make an appointment, right? Decide on the time frame. Decide on the place. Have an agenda. How, you, how are you going to approach your Bible reading? And then your prayer, right? So for your prayer, um, let's just talk about that point. You know, how you, my father, uh, in one of his sermons one time, he, he taught how to pray, all right, and how to pray. And it was really a three-part, and this is just an outline. Obviously, your prayers are going to be personal. Your prayers, you can, you can say whatever you want to God, right? You can say whatever you want. Um, you know, he is there to, he's your friend, right? You're, you're creating a deeper relationship with, with this person who loves you and cares about you. So obviously you can say whatever you want, but if you need it, if it helps to have an outline, you always want to start your prayers with praise, right? You always want to give up praise and worship. Obviously we want to give, you know, <laughs> give it, uh, give the, uh, give it words to do, you know, so to speak, it's, he deserves the praise. He deserves to worship. And we want to start with that every single time we start to pray. Thank God for your blessings. Praise him and honor him for how marvelous and, and abundant he is. You know, his kingdom come, his will be done, right? And then the second one is ask forgiveness for your sins. Confess. You don't want anything, 
you don't want anything splitting or causing a, a divide between you and your relationship with Christ. So if there's something in your heart that you need to confess, confess it. Never be afraid to confess to, to, to the Lord. Never be afraid to speak freely with the Lord. All right, so get that out there. Ask forgiveness, the sins that you commit, the sins that you omit. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. But we can ask for forgiveness in prayer and supplication. Okay, and third is, you know, um, uh, I don't want to say, say requests. I'm sure there's a better word for it than that. But prayer requests, right? Things that are on your heart. God put those desires in your heart. As long as you're living according to his will, those desires are going to be his desires. So what you're asking for, he already wants for you. So ask for what's on your heart and seek his will with those and understand that his timeline might not be the same as yours, but you, you, you have not because you ask not. So put that out there, you know, speak with, speak with him and let him know what's on your heart. All right. Next is your journaling. You know, if you want to journal your thoughts, journal things, journal, journal things that God has spoken to you during that time. Now, of course, if you're doing some kind of daily devotional, you'll probably have, you know, a place to do that right there in those devotionals and that, in that, you know, outline, uh, those, uh, reading agendas that you can buy, but, you know, it's always great to jot down those thoughts, whether you do it straight into your Bible, like my dad does, or maybe you have a, a notebook you want to write down and, and journal things that God has spoken to you promises that, uh, that he has made to you and, uh, and claiming those. So that's a really good thing to do. Okay. And then I know I've been firing through these, but the last one, well, actually the second to last would be commit. You need to commit to this. Why? Because it's very important. It is a very important thing to spend time with Christ daily. So commit to it. Really make it an important part of your life because I promise you, it is the best thing you could ever do. And then finally, you know, be flexible. If you're new to this, if you're a new Christian and you're, or you're, or you're really now starting, you're like, you know what? I really am going to get serious about spending time with the Lord each day. Be flexible in the sense and find what works for you. You know, if you try something out and you're just like, you know, for some reason, I just can't, I can't ever make that stick Then try something different. The point is to spend that time with Christ, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the evening, whether it's driving in your car, just find that time to do it and make sure that you do, because I promise you, your life will change. You will see the benefits of it, not only in, in your, in your, the way you feel as a person, but also in the world around you as well. So my name is David Thomas. Once again, Orchard Hills Church, hope you got value from this. And if this helped you in any way, please like, comment, share this with others, and uh, look forward to speaking with you all very soon. Take care. Bye.